do you think that the Kogi truck, could it have happened anywhere else? Nah, man, this is LA to the core, man. Yeah. It's uh, because of our streets, the freedom. You know, LA is so big. Yeah. And the foundation of Kogi at the beginning was that nobody in authority could find us. That was, that was critical to the, to the recipe of Kogi, right? So it was really important for Kogi to hide in the early days. But then when you turn the corner, then you see 2,000 people. But it's behind a railroad track or it's behind a warehouse complex that's been closed since 4 p.m. It was also the culture of L.A. and the people, especially the Latino culture of L.A. and the, the culture of eating in a car, putting the food on your dashboard, yeah. standing outside, sitting on the curb. The weather had a lot to do with it. All these things were there embedded in our kind of like subconscious. And what Kogi did was unlock them again. And then, and then obviously the food itself was just another layer of street, right? Okay, so like when you pick another city, whether it's like Chicago or New York, you can pick maybe one iconic food, right? In LA, because we were so big and there's so many different neighborhoods, you couldn't really say whether or not this thing or that thing or this thing represented LA. What Kogi did was kind of bring all those things together. A taco, barbecue, Korean food, a salad, healthy dining, lots of aromatics, lots of vegetables, all these things together into one thing and it tasted like LA. So I think our first Coachella was probably 2009 or 10. How did you, how did that even come together? Well, by that time, obviously, Kogi was a phenomenon on the streets, right? right? Like, it opened up the door for a lot of other people to walk through. A lot of other street food came up. The whole idea of food trucks got reinvigorated. So it became this thing. And up until that first year, Coachella was still operating on the old carnival-based food yeah. options. Before you came yeah. in and you started, you planted that seed before I was able to come in and, and, and bring some friends, it wasn't about food. Yeah. There was not a brand there. Not at all. Nope. Not at all. No, kombu first no brand, kombucha bar. Nope. No the nothing. first brand that yeah. ever saw in the food yeah. area was right was there. Was this Kogi truck. Yeah. yeah. And and people just, they responded to it, man. So as soon as Kogi shelled out the first taco or the tofu burrito, people bit into it. It was just like, whoa. Yeah. And I think the festival saw that. And the next year we saw two or three more trucks, right. I remember. Yeah. And then they started to create the VIP areas and then that extended even more. Yep. Even when we first started talking about five, six years ago, we were still at a transition point even then. Yes, you know, we were. Where it well, was, you, and you had yeah. ideas that were- and Too I'm, far out. Yeah. No, I love them though. <laughs> but they were, they were at the time because we yeah. just weren't there. Yeah. And, and, now, and now you are. And now we are. I like what you've done though, really in the last three or four years where you've really made the food experience paramount and it's become bigger and much more diverse, obviously, and multi-dimensional and experiential, but it hasn't become too corporate, which I really love. So 10 years in, we're gonna be at Coachella. The food's special there, we do cool booths, but I think that what they will notice is what we're doing with you. It means a lot that you guys look at us in that way because we never expected it, but we share history together. We were there in the beginning and to be a part of the 20th year and for, for you guys to build us this world. So basically what they're doing is they're building us a Kogi land. Instead of uh, it just being a stand, we're gonna, you're gonna walk into a neighborhood basically. And when you enter, it's gonna feel like you're part of the Kogi family. Thank you so much for talking LA food, and then Coachella, where we not only do work, but you know we love to spend time and share food and share stories and listen to some of the best bands in the world. I can't wait to go this year. Yeah, I really can't wait. This is like a mile marker in the sand, you know? We're on the right path. Well, I look know? forward to enjoying yeah. that with you. Hell yeah. Thank you.